historically, all of this area was salt marsh habitat. And then about 100, 150 years ago, people started coming in and diking off the salt marsh, creating these salt ponds. So this is actually a really good area to make salt. Tidal marsh is a, a very specific kind of habitat that receives water twice a day, it's tidal, and it grows very specific kinds of plants. And the impact of having all these salt ponds built here was a loss of that habitat. So the Bay Area has lost somewhere in the 90% range of this tidal marsh habitat. So the salt ponds came in and although it was useful for salt production, it cut off the bay from its source. So it was kind of like clogging the arteries of the salt marsh. The South Bay Salt Pond Restoration Project is a collaboration of different agencies and other groups that work together to restore former salt evaporator ponds to some combination of tidal salt marsh and managed ponds all for wildlife. The South Bay Salt Pond Restoration Project encompasses about 15,000 acres of land that is from the San Mateo Bridge south to the very southern tip of the San Francisco Bay. These are all former salt evaporator ponds that have been making salt for about the past 100 to 150 years. And they are the area that you see sort of with delineated lines around them as you fly over the San Francisco Bay. And some of them are brown and some of them are green and some of them are pink or orange. So in 2003, Cargill sold and in some cases donated the land both to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife and also to the California State Department of Fish and Wildlife. And basically Cargill still maintains a footprint and they still make salt in the San Francisco Bay, but they have a smaller area of land that they manage now. So before Cargill, there were a lot of smaller salt making um, companies in the San Francisco Bay. Leslie Salt was an owner that was bought out by Cargill. Before Leslie, there was sort of a lot of mom and pop salt making shops around and even before that the Ohlone um, people used to harvest the salt on a certainly a much smaller scale but in the same basic process where water would come in they let it uh, evaporate out and then you scrape up the salt for use. Salt is made in the San Francisco Bay Area and other areas through a solar evaporative process. So water moves from pond to pond to pond and through a series of pipes or breaks in the levees and as it moves sequentially through each pond, it gets saltier and saltier. And finally, in the end product, uh, the, the water gets so salty that the salts fall out in precipitation. And in the end, they basically can scrape up that salt using heavy equipment, and then that's their harvest for the year. They created these salt ponds by digging into the marsh and then creating this big burrow ditch and then piling that mud up to create a levee. So you have a pond that has a levee around it and then there's a burrow ditch right on the inside. But the interior of the pond is still this wonderful marsh channel um, habitat. So what we do when we restore is we work with hydrologists and engineers and they figure out where to open up or breach those levees that had been created for the salt pond. And then we just wait for the natural tide water to come in. It brings in mud, which fills up the pond. And then when it reaches a certain elevation, then all the seeds and the different plant materials that the tide brings in, those plant materials then can take root in that mud. And then we quickly get a salt marsh again. So one of the big reasons that the refuge is here and also that for the South Bay Salt Pond Restoration Project is for endangered species that again are endangered due to that habitat loss. So two of those big species are the California clapper rail, which is sort of a chicken sized bird. It's a secretive marsh bird that lives only in tidal marsh and only in the San Francisco Bay. And the other species is called a salt marsh harvest mouse of which this is a replica. Um, salt marsh harvest mice are unique. They only, again, live in the tidal marshes and only in San Francisco Bay. So these salt ponds were created, like I said, by creating a levee, but that levee's just piled up mud. If somebody didn't keep adding to that mud, which Cargill does now for their salt production, 
that mud would just disintegrate over time and that bay water would just come in and flood many of the communities. So the, the salt ponds are kind of acting as they're under salt production, acting as a barrier. But what we want to do is convert some to marsh and have that as the natural barrier that was always here so that not only is there flood protection from that marsh, but there's the habitat benefits as well as the recreational benefits to the community. The 15,000 acres, we don't want to just open up all the ponds at once because we only have one chance to do this right. So what we're trying to do is do it in phases over the next 40 years. We're about 10 years into the project. It's important to save these endangered creatures in, for a couple of reasons. They are part of our history in the Bay Area and once they're gone, they're never coming back. Somebody likened it to me once to, there's a book that was written you know, many years ago, and if all the copies of that one book are destroyed, you're never going to get that book back again.